This is Farley Farm House. It was the home of my parents, Roland Penrose and Lee Miller. And I grew up here. I remember with affection that many of the key artists of the 20th century visited here. Among them was Man Ray. And on one visit, he left his suitcase behind. On another, he signed the visitor's book like this with this extraordinary forced perspective. So you can only see what he's written if you look at it edge on. My mother, Lee Miller, worked with Man Ray from 1929 to 1932. They became very close. They were collaborators and lovers. The Man Ray Portraits exhibition at the National Portrait Gallery is very exciting for me because Lee Miller was Man Ray's key model in the whole time that she was with him. And one of the key parts of that collaboration was the discovery of solarization. That's the technique that puts this extraordinarily beautiful dark line around the image. It also changes the tonality from negative to positive. The story of the discovery of solarization is that one day Lee Miller was working in the darkroom developing some negatives and in the darkness a rat ran over her foot. She shrieked and turned on the white light. You do not turn on the white light when you're dish developing negatives and Man Ray nearly had a fit. He snapped the light off, grabbed the negatives, dumped them in the fixer and when the final image came through he found this extraordinary change had taken place. It makes this wonderful, surreal, dreamlike effect. And it became like their hallmark of their artistic association because they both used it long after they'd parted. It's wonderful to see in the exhibition the triptych of Man Ray's photographs of Lee Miller with the shadow patterns on her body. Because when you look at them, you realize that this is a lover photographing his loved one. But interestingly, the image that Man Ray wanted to show to the world is this one. He signed it. But the obvious difference is he's also sheared off her head. He's deprived her of her personality, of her identity, and of her ability to talk back. And I think this actually tells us a lot about the struggle that was always going on when he was trying to control this amazing, uncontrollable woman. Man Ray loved Lee Miller passionately, but the trouble was he was possessive. He wanted to control her and to limit her. In one of his letters here, which I presume was written after a frightful row, he says, you must arrange to live as my wife, married or not. I cannot see you in any other way. This is a very strange statement for a person who was at the front end of the Surrealist movement because the Surrealists normally rejected things like marriage and conventions like that. But here, he so wants to have Lee in his life. And of course, the more he tried to possess her, the more that pushed her away because she wasn't going to be owned by anyone. And eventually, that broke the relationship and she went back to the United States and established her own studio in New York. Man Ray and Lee Miller continued to love each other until the end of their lives. And once they'd gotten over all the possession stuff, they became the deepest and closest of friends. And so also, my father became a friend of Man Ray's, and in fact his biographer. This is a letter written on March the 14th, 1970, very close to the end of Man Ray's life. And one page here is to Roland, telling Roland about the photographs that are being shipped for the exhibition that Roland's curating at the ICA. The other side, much more fulsomely, is to Lee. And the last paragraph, he says, I'm pinned down in my little retreat. I cannot walk, and my doctor seems to try out all the pills on the market to which I am completely allergic, but not to my loves, like you. I mean, I love you, man.